Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I thought that I would do a little tear down of this thing. Now I'm gonna be gentle because I don't want to break it and I want to uh, have it arrive in Alaska in very good shape and I hate that I'm probably gonna have to pull the feet off but I can glue those back on pretty well and uh, I don't think that'll be an issue. So I talked about in my other videos how uh, the this seemed like a device that didn't have a particular use case for it, but I actually went online and looked at their Kickstarter, and the Kickstarter took in over $600,000. So there's obviously a lot of people that have a lot of interest in this device, or, or they have a lot of money. But beyond that, I, one thing is very clear. The thing was designed from the ground up to be used with the GPIO. It was not made to be like a media consumption device it is a portable raspberry pi and that's kind of what i deduced from my uh initial video on it and i think that my instincts were right on that when you look at the kickstarter you're gonna see that there's and i'll put, pop some pictures up over time that this thing was designed kind of from the ground up to be more of an experimental machine and i appreciate that and i i've said in the last video and i'll repeat in this video that i'm really glad that people like Sunfounder went out and made this device. Now, speaking of this device, I am doing my best not to break the thing. Uh, there is a screw in the center, if I didn't get that one. These screws don't actually want to come out, so... Uh, and I don't think tipping it over, like they feel enough in there that tipping them over is not going to knock that screw out, so we're going to see here. Don't really want to grab on that. Oh, there we go. Making a little progress. Now I am concerned that there's some kind of ribbon cable in here. There's obviously a logic board. Like if you think about it, there's ports all over the thing and they're connected to something. So don't like that. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, feel like we're getting somewhere. Ooh. Ah, little Nick. Sorry, Evan. Okay. So, revealing the insides, we have our speakers, which are connected here. Let's go ahead and pop that off. So this is a lot more, I should come out there from the other side, this is a lot more than putting a Raspberry Pi in a, I got the buttons right there. Um, it's a lot more than just attaching a screen to a Raspberry Pi. So we've got a, a decent sized chunky battery pack here. Uh, with. Okay, so you got a connector in here for the battery pack and then one that's coming out over here for the fan. Let's see here. Yep, this is the, so you got battery pack, fan, and then this is your uh, USB. So, okay, so looking at this, you can see, and I don't really want to take this apart here, but there is a full-size HDMI port right here. And what that tells me is that if you had a short, uh, if you had a short micro HDMI adapter, you could probably get that to work. And then this is your USB for the power and it's coming right in here to this JST connector I think that would be a JST and so in other words you actually could adapt this out for the fittings you need for a um, Raspberry Pi 4 so they they have a full-on logic board here and so I would assume that this is the controller for the monitor itself uh, let's see here so we have RTD six or two six six two MB. So I mean that has to be okay. So this says Sunfounder. So this is a purpose-built board. Which again, this is what the Kickstarter's paid for. They paid for having this board. Anybody can get a screen. Anybody can get a uh, you know can, can get a battery. But this is custom for this, and I think that's very very cool that they did it. So. Um, they're obviously doing all their charging circuits, they're doing the sound processing, they're doing... So, okay, let's talk about the sound. So, the only interaction between the Pi and this thing is this HDMI cable. 
So they're actually breaking out this HDMI sound and giving you the ability to put it out through the headphone jack or to those speakers that are attached to the case over here. Um, they are, let's see here, they're breaking out all of the HDMI in signals into these individual wires plus what I'm guessing would be power and sending that to this through this dedicated cable to the 10-inch uh, screen. They're handling charging logic, which would be coming in here. Let's take a look at that. So, not a lot of beefiness there. I was I would be real interested in figuring out what the maximum this board could put out because to be honest, like the the output capacity of this board power-wise, it's what's limiting this for a uh, Raspberry Pi 4. I think you pretty much want to send. For three amps to the Pi 4. So, kind of interested in knowing what this thing is capable of. I just knocked my camera down. Um, so, this, uh, again, I am not a power management guru, but uh, one thing I see, it's got these chunky uh, APM uh, 3095Ps. I believe they're uh, MOSFETs, and I, I don't really know much about them, but. Um, I would imagine that two and a half versus three amps isn't really going to make much of a difference, but somebody who is smarter than I am would probably be able to tell you if they think this thing could output three amps without uh, causing any kind of overheating issues. The other thing I noticed is this is your touchscreen cable right here, and you could tuck it somewhere in here and get it out of the way if you decide that you want to forego the touchscreen for a more uh, streamlined approach. So. Interesting. I just wanted to know what was inside this thing. I don't uh, I don't know enough about the power management to give you definitive answers on that, but maybe that's why we all work together on YouTube and see see what we can find. So I wanted to pause the video for a second because I feel like looking at this thing and uh, again, I'm not an engineer, but it looks to me like there would be plenty of room to turn this pie 90 degrees and use some kind of breakout headers to run those ports along the side, even if you only wind up with two USB ports on the side and steal one internally for that uh, touchscreen. But it seems like there'd be a lot of room to get that USB touchscreen cable inside without running it down the outside of the device. This is what's inside the Pi Pad. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.